I'm Tom from Do It Yourself Home Automation, and this is a look at some of the new functions that you get in your Fitbit app with the new Fitbit Sense smartwatch. I'm one of the first people to get my hands on a Fitbit Sense. Um, I've been testing it out. You can follow along here or on 10.medium.com, um, the Medium's 1.0 publication for my full reviews and uh, deep dives on the Fitbit Sense. So let's take a look through here at some of the new things that you're starting to see in the Fitbit app with the Fitbit Sense. And the Sense has a bunch of new sensors, and the data from those is being surfaced in the app and combined with some other things like sleep tracking and exercise. But we're also seeing these new tabs here like stress management. So let's go into that. Um, and you can see that Fitbit is now generating a stress management score. It's a metric like their sleep score from 0 to 100. You get a different one each day. Um, and it's based on a variety of different factors. So the first one is uh, self-reporting, how you're feeling. So I can go in here. I think I feel pretty calm. So I'll say I feel calm. Um, you can put in your own sort of subjective feeling about how, uh, how you're handling stress, and that's taken into account. But then if we go to, to learn more here, we can see all the different uh, metrics that they're using to determine your stress from physical measurements. So heart rate variability and an elevated resting heart rate. These are things that are looking at how your heart rate changes over time, and these can correlate with emotional states and with stress. Weltori is a company that does uh, just this, and Fitbit is now integrating the same technology into their, uh, their app and probably using the continuous heart rate monitoring to measure these things for you. Um, an elevated sleeping heart rate above your resting heart rate can indicate stress. They're looking at that too. And then the Sense also has an electrodermal activity sensor. You can do basically guided meditations where it's looking at your um, electrodermal activity, which is basically how conductive your skin is. And that can measure stress and little micro sweats and things that you might have if you're feeling stressed out. And all of these are looking at the performance of your autonomic nervous system, which they describe as your fight or flight response. So it's looking at how physically stressed out you are there. Again, mostly using heart rate data, uh, which is a pretty good way of looking at that, and also this new electrodermal activity sensor if you use that. The next piece is exertion. Um, so as they say here, the right amount of physical activity can shield you from stress. So it's basically looking at exercise and that impact on stress. Daily steps, weekly activity, making sure that you're staying within a good number, and also fitness fatigue score. So if you exercise too much or too often, that can actually place additional stress on your body. And uh, that's something it looks like they're taking into account. And then the final thing is sleep patterns. Um, and this is looking at poor sleep and uh, restless sleep, and also the ratios of REM to deep sleep. Uh, higher REM sleep can actually correlate in some cases with anxiety and depression. So that's probably something that they're looking at. Um, and then this idea of sleep debt over time, which I think is another interesting metric to be looking at if you're accumulating sleep debt. So apparently I'm doing okay on sleep there. Um, my sleep patterns for the first one seem like they're okay. Uh, the bottom one looks not great. I'm not sure what the distinction is there. It's something I'll have to look into more over time. So those are the factors going into this new metric. Um, and ultimately I think you end up with something that's really useful here because you end up with uh, a stress management score that you can track each day and you can also track um, how you feel subjectively, how those two things correlate. And over time, you can make changes like uh, exercising more, sleeping more, um, trying to do guided meditation or any kind of activity that lowers your heart rate variability. Um, or actually, I'm not sure if it lowers, increases, improves in any case your heart rate variability and reduces your stress. And you should see that reflected in the readings from the senses sensors and then here in the stress management tab. Um, the other one that they've added is this actually two health metrics and a, a temperature baseline and temperature readings. So health metrics really drills down into these very specific metrics. Uh, breathing rate, this is the heart rate variability broken out as an actual metric and reading here. Skin temperature, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, SpO2 you can get, uh, which is your pulse oximetry, how much oxygen is in your blood. That's another sensor on the sense, and that's something that you can get on the watch itself. Um, and then resting heart rate uh, is looking at your um, heart rate when you're not exercising or moving around. The lower, generally, generally speaking, anyway, the better. Um, that usually improves with exercise, so it's something that you can keep track of over time. Um, the other one here is uh, skin temperature. 
So you have to wear the watch for three nights to actually get a baseline. I just got mine yesterday, so I don't have this yet, but this can detect if you have a fever um, and ultimately could be used to actually detect if you might have COVID-19. It's obviously a really important uh, thing. And you can see that that's uh, some data on that is broken out uh, with the COVID-19 button in the lower right. You can sign up for studies and help them improve this function. It's probably something they'll roll out later. But for now, you can get a baseline temperature reading. This will probably also for female users go into predictions of menstrual cycle and, and fertile periods as well. And then I think on top of that, uh, we're going to get, here's a political text it looks like, uh, on top of that we're going to get um, some of these metrics broken out in the sleep tabs and also in the exercise tab. So the improved um, sleep tracking using that breathing data, um, using heart rate data will probably be built into the sleep score, which Fitbit had already provided. But, you know, I'm really excited about this new stress management score. I think especially in 2020, stress management, self-care are really important. And here's a way to actually quantify it, to link it to specific things that you can improve, like sleep um, and exercise. It's kind of annoying when people say, oh, you know, relax, take it easy. Well, how do you actually do that? This is a way to, to take actionable steps, like getting more sleep, getting better sleep, uh, and exercising more, and to see the impact that that has on your stress levels. And then I think ultimately Fitbit will probably start to make recommendations based on correlating your data to say on days that you sleep, you know, an extra 30 minutes or go to bed 30 minutes earlier or exercise for an extra 15 minutes, your stress is lower. So, you know, try those things, see how it improves your stress over time. I really like this new focus from Fitbit on stress management. Um, obviously the, uh, the temperature readings, another new sensor on the Fitbit Sense, uh, really interesting and important for uh, where the world is today. If you want to keep track of my reviews and see more videos, please subscribe to my channel here. It really helps. Or again, you can follow me at 10.medium.com. And I'll also try to include a link to my newsletter in the description here on YouTube. Um, join the newsletter if you want to get updates about my newest videos and, uh, and anything else I'm writing or showing about the Fitbit Sense. Thanks.